Hi. Hi, Dushan. It's Brian here. Hey. How are you, Brian? Great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Of course. My pleasure. Well, Thank uh, you for having me. Uh, well, congratulations on your uh, award, Best Mentor Award at uh, Tales of the Cocktail this year. That's pretty awesome. What does that, Thank uh, you. What does that category uh, mean, mean to you? I don't know, man. I think it's really the highest, the highest honor you can get. I mean, you know, I still am trying to kind of uh, get to my kind of senses and compare thinking that's not, you know, connected with any kind of emotional reaction, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be, you know, to understand what that really means and what that responsibility now is having won that award. Yeah, it is a. Uh, it does seem like it comes with some responsibility, and uh, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, yeah, we met there at the at one of those duo events at Tales of Cocktail, and that was that was those are awesome events. Very cool to uh, have you personally make a drink for me and my wife. That was an honor. We appreciated that, and uh, got a chance to have Jimmy and make me a drink. And uh, yeah, that's really really fun event. How do you, have, you've been to uh, all the Tales of Cocktail or most of them? Most of them. Yeah. Most of them. This is my eighth year, probably. Uh-huh. It's, uh, yeah. it's a fun time, huh? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's the biggest gathering in our industry. Um, uh, it it it's you know it used to help me a great deal make some money on the side when I was before I uh, started working with the eighty six company because I would get consulting work for a full year just by being there for five days mm. uh, you know I would actually make another salary for myself you know another yearly salary just by being there and, and connecting with people right. um, but those days are gone <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm in the liquor business and you know uh, things are different yeah can, can you tell us about the 86 yeah. company a bit yeah I mean so we have come together after years of consulting for uh, large uh, liquor companies, um, with the understanding that uh, marketing-wise and production-wise, everything they do is geared towards uh, the consumer and uh, consumer approval. Uh, so, but we were noticing that not only us as bartenders, but also our friends and, and the industry in general has, you know, has been going. Uh, a huge change um, you know the bartender of today and the bartender of 15 years ago are completely two different animals mm-hmm. so the bartender of today is is more like a craftsperson they they require specific tools to be able to to execute their job and it's not only the hardware tools that we're talking about you know the shakers and the, and the, the mixing glasses and the ice and all that stuff they also require liquid tools uh, spirits that are designed specifically to be versatile, dependable, and can shine in cocktails. Mm. And uh, so for us, uh, it was inconceivable that nobody ever fo- thought about this before, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah. so we, we set out talking to bartenders, asking them, what is it that you need? What will make your life easier? Right. And so we got all the responses and we set out to find producers who will produce these spirits with us from scratch so that we can give the bartenders exactly what is it that they need, not what they want. Because, you know, what we want and what we need are two different things. Mm. But what, what will really make your life easier? And so, and so we, we have come up with, with uh, a gin that actually now comes again back to you at Juniper Flavor. Um, we know we have a rum uh, that is the only other Carta Blanca rum on the market next to Havana Club. Uh, we have... Um, Tequila that is slightly overproof comes from the Highlands over Andes, and finally we have um, a vodka made in Canada. So four basic spirits. The only one that we couldn't make and but we're asked to do was a hundred proof rye whiskey that will always be in stock and sell for twenty one dollars. <laughs> you couldn't make that happen. Come on, <laughs> it seems like you so, could do almost anything. <laughs> well, you know that that was the one the one thing we like we couldn't do. We we certainly found. Um, we certainly found a source and s- could make whiskey, but uh, that whiskey would not stand up in quality to the rest of the products that we make. Right. Therefore, you know, we just decided not to do it. And it also takes uh, quite a bit longer to make whiskey, right? So that might be part of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we were actually 
looking to source out already aged whiskey and then blend it according to our idea what that whiskey should taste like. Mm. Uh, but since most of the whiskey that's available now on the open market comes from Canada, um, and the way they produce and they age, um, it results in, in, in a style of whiskey that is not necessarily something that bartenders want for mixing. Mm. It, is a, it is a great style for you know, enjoying it by itself, but for for drinking, for 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 using it as a as a as a, as a workhorse whiskey, it has to have a lot more malt, mm. uh, and we couldn't find we couldn't find enough uh, whiskey of of that quality. Therefore, we just uh, chose not to do it for the time being. Right, right. Well, why do you think uh, rye is just uh, is it a matter of supply or demand that that it's uh, running out all the time, or both? Um. It is, it is a problem. Uh, you know, there is different styles of rye whiskey. Uh, when, we, when, we, when we, as bartenders, talk about rye, what comes to our mind is something along the lines of Rittenhouse 100 proof, um, something that's bottled in bond, something that is uh, a little bit rough on the edges, um, not, so, not so polished in, 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 in the flavor profile, something that actually can work great in a Manhattan and old fashioned and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and demand for that style of whiskey is huge by the bartenders. But then you have now, now you have, and, and the supply is fairly low. Uh, the supply is such that actually um, these, these products go out of stock a lot. And that um, it's, it's just, you know, it's just a, a really uncomfortable place to be as a bar a bar owner or a bar bar manager or even a bartender because you can't consistently commit to uh, to offer a, a cocktail that that uses whiskeys like that because yeah. uh, they'll be going out of stock within three months and then what yeah. and other people have resorted to do um, th and then there's the demand and supply on the consumer side which is you know like Templeton or or um, whistle pig and all these new brands that are coming out that are basically designed, you know, to be over oaked, um, to appeal to the consumer palate and don't necessarily work well in cocktails. Mm. So, um, you have these two kind of camps and both of them are experiencing huge demands and very, very spotty supply. Uh, a lot of whiskey producers are laying rye as we speak, but this is a process, you know, this is a category that is so small in the overall spirits category that it doesn't even register. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, you cannot yeah. even get like a one percent global sales. Yeah. You know to see, and so it is something that is cool and hip, and has been cool and hip. But I don't think that that's going to change pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of uh, Manhattan's, I must say, uh, my first trip into employees only was uh, such a great experience. I, I may have told you the story that night, but you know, my buddy was running late. He said he was going to be there. He wasn't there, and I was like a little out of sorts. I, you know, hadn't been in the bar before, and Igor just made me feel so welcome. You know, he, you know, he could tell I was a little uh, out of sorts somehow. He just came over with a glass of water you know no pressure to order drink right away it's such a such a great bar you know and uh we really uh appreciate the way you designed it you know so uh i wanted to ask you know is is there anything you could recommend to bar owners without major re renovations to make their bars sexier <laughs> as employees only is uh well there's a few things yeah there is uh there is the outs you know the outward side the external side you know that's kind of a little bit formulaic mm -hmm. um it should reflect uh, the way you feel about hospitality, for sure. So, whatever hospitality means for you and your and your team, you know your external bar design should should definitely take that into into notice. Which means, what's your light going going to be? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the the shade of that light? Is it you know? Is it just pure you know uh, ye yellow light, or do you go orange? Do you go darker amber? Yeah. As the night progresses, what are the reflections from that light going to be? What are the other surfaces? Is your bar bar top um, wood, mahogany, or is it copper, or is it brass, or is it uh, um, uh, uh, what's that other one uh, that people use a lot? Uh, granite. Is, yeah, well, granite is is un, is a very unfortunate yeah, choice. I, I you know, I always I always advise against against stone surfaces it's yeah. just the breakage the breakage is insane but you know like what are your surfaces like is are you are you comfortable you know sitting at that bar um uh, do you want to stay there for a while um 
you know, is the is the when you sit at the bar, you know, do you feel like you, your your legs are supported, your elbows are supported? Do you feel properly? You know, these are all elements that people don't really notice until they're not there, and then you're like, oh, something's wrong with this bar stool, or something's wrong with this bar top, or the lights, or you know, I don't, I don't. You know, I or I don't look that good in this light, or I see my reflection in the mirror, and I'm not really happy the way I, I come come across. So these are all things. But then, you know, the most important thing is how you make people feel. Yeah, and that's something that you know is is just a life skill, right? Like yeah. we always go through life trying to make other people feel good about us, right. uh, see, seeking approval, right? We're yeah. seeking approval. So so the guests want the same thing, you know, uh, and and so. How do we train our staff to to be available to to be vulnerable in a sense that we always give approval first? Um, that I think is a really really important part yeah. of designing bars, and that's what what Igor did to you. He 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 basically he basically adjusted himself mm -hmm. to your to your presence, and you know he noticed that you are. Uh, you know, a little bit maybe, you know, late or confused or a little bit uncomfortable being in a new place. And so he just gave you space, gave you gave you time to settle down, got you a glass of water, there's no pressure, you know, like here you're welcome to be whoever you need to be. Yeah. You know, and and and, and that's that's kind of the secret. It was perfect in that moment, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 